Hey guys and welcome to sunny Spain. So today I have a treat for you guys because we're gonna put the new Volvo EX90 twin performance versus the Polestar 3 long range dual motor in a range test to find out which of these can go the furthest at 120 kilometers an hour that's 75 miles an hour in imperial units and if you've seen my individual range test of this and this you may have an idea of which of these is the most efficient and which of these will go the furthest so that may not be the mystery the mystery is by how much is there a big difference or isn't there a big difference so the twin performance we have here dual electric motors 21 inch wheels and 517 horsepower the Polestar 3 dual electric motors 489 horsepower so less output than this but same electric motors just different tuning same battery pack they're built on the same platform they are essentially mechanically the same car though tuned differently and the big factor is the form factor between these because this is a three row SUV that's more than five meters long this is little less than 4.9 meters and is a two row sporty coupe SUV and that may you know you may have the answer there so guys this trip is thanks to you this is a self-funded trip but also a crowd-funded trip where you guys have been contributing since late last year to this trip and as promised I've traveled down here with a videographer to drive the other vehicle and also to stand behind the camera so we can get the best content out for you guys this is the third video we're filming today we're going to be able to film this before we lose daylight and then tomorrow we're going to film a few videos so this is going to be an intense week of filming 10 12 videos in the next five six days so if you do want to support what i do here on the channel you want to thank me for making these videos or you just you know think what we do here is very cool and you want to contribute to this trip which is quite expensive out of pocket there is a gofundme down below if you haven't already contributed to this trip if you haven't that's fine but all donations all contributions are much appreciated so with that out of the way without further ado let's jump into these cars the day's still beautiful it's like 26 degrees celsius outside so proper summer testing proper norwegian proper northern european or scandinavian winters and let's hop into these drive them down the road here towards lisbon take the route about an hour southwest of here and find out which of these can go the furthest. I'm starting in the EX90 and Louise, she's in the Polestar 3 halfway. We're gonna switch up cars so we have equal seat time in each car, meaning that our driving style shouldn't have any impact on the results. And we're also driving both cars on cruise control set to 120 kilometers an hour. So our driving styles really shouldn't have any impact at all the car i'm going to drive is always going to be in front run in clean air and the car louise is driving is going to be behind again on adaptive cruise with the same distance so both cars have equal time in clean air so these results should be as fair and comparable as possible so the ex90 i've already driven this car in this range test earlier today and also the polestar 3 and these cars, you know, built on the same platform, same mechanicals, same drivetrain, same electric motors, same battery pack. They are tuned very differently. This is very comfortable, very soft, also very quiet. That car also, I'm going to talk about that more in that car, but this is a more numbed experience. And also a thing that's worth noting is that this car has the Nordico interior. It's this wetsuit type of material that, you know, I think the intention was to replace leather, but I think Volvo had gotten a lot of pushback that they don't offer leather in the EX90. So from next year, they're going to offer from the Mulder 26 Napa leather as an option. They already have that in the ES90, I think. So that is a very nice and welcome thing. So the seats are the exact same. But because this is like a softer material, these seats are softer. The Napa leather seats in the Pulsar 3 are stiffer, harder, whatever you want to call it. I think they're a little bit more supportive, but I think that really depends on your preference. I like the seats in that maybe a tad bit better, but these also, after having driven like, this is the fifth hour I'm driving this road today. 
uh, and you add up, you know, the time we spent from picking up the cars to getting down to this. Yeah, I'm probably, you know, in between these cars had like three, four hours in each car. And I think like now I appreciate the softness of these seats. So we'll see once they hop in back into that car. But this also has the Bose sound system. And I think this does not have active noise cancellation. You only get that with the Barrels and Wilkins, which is an option in this, but which is optioned in the Polestar 3. I'm going to do a whole comparison video, you know, a full review between these two cars, which is going to be the next video. So if you don't want to miss out on that, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. So after about 40 kilometers on the road, our average consumption is 24.0 or I don't know if point zero. There's no decimal points be behind that in this car that that has. But according to the trip, trip computer is 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Also, a thing that I failed to find in this car the first time around was the range assistant. It's right there. So that is set, uh, that is uh, activated and my cabin is set to 21 degrees Celsius. So let's call up Louise and hear what the consumption is in the Polestar 3 after about 20 minutes on the road. Hello Hi. Louise, how are you? I'm good, how about you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Just a little tired, like I think I've been driving cars like five, six, seven <laughs> hours today. This is the third yeah. loop on this, uh, th third time on this test loop. So what's your average consumption now after 42 kilometers? It's 24.0. That's the same as this 24 point, or it doesn't say 0.0, it's 24. Okay, that's interesting. Both cars are run yeah. in the most efficient mode and also with range assistant activated. Hmm. Okay, so before I hang up, do you prefer driving any of these cars over the other, the X90 or the Polestar 3, and why? I prefer the Polestar 3. Okay. Because it's more comfortable. You think it's more comfortable? Yeah. Okay, maybe also more sporty, or? Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm... The Volvo, the hmm? Volvo is more family car. The Volvo is more family car, yeah, this has three rows yeah. and seven seats, so... <laughs> Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, so you have a nice trip and we'll switch up halfways and we'll do a little update on the consumption then. And yeah, have a nice trip. It is not perfect. Okay, bye. Okay, bye bye. Okay, so we're now halfway. Now I'm going to jump into Polestar 3. Louise, she's going to jump in the EX90. And if you come closer here, you can see we've killed, we just washed the cars like before we started. And there are so many bugs on the front, on the windshield. It's just really hard doing any type of video when it's like that. Uh, I don't think the Polestar is as bad. Maybe the EX90 is worse. So after uh, 97 kilometers and almost an hour on the road, the average consumption of this is 20.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And this is 22. So this is winning by a little bit, but let's hop in these drive back to where we started and then find out which is the winner and by how much. I actually think there's an issue with the seal around the driver window because I can hear a lot of wind noise off the wing mirror immediately that I didn't hear in that EX90. And I don't remember it being like this earlier today. And when I open up the window a little bit, yeah, there's this whistle, there's something wrong with the, That actually helped. Yeah, so there's an issue. So judging which is the quietest, even though I think this does have, you know, that active noise cancellation is really hard because of the issue. I've never experienced that in any Polestar ever. But what I have experienced is that immediately when you hop into this car, it feels much sportier and much more buttoned down and precise and Germanic than that EX90. There's actually a very big difference in the way these drive and the steering wheel also that, you know, it looks similar, but the, the way the, this leather wraps around the steering wheel, the tolerances, you know, the stitching here, it just feels much more like a precision product, this car and this cab. And I'm going to talk more about that in my full review that is going to be out, you know, later on, but it just feels more refined and 
more developed, if that makes any sense. I mean, the Volvo isn't bad to drive. I really like the Volvo. And, you know, I think the Volvo is, it's so pretty. I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know, I just keep looking at it in the mirror. It's such a pretty design. And I think it's one of the prettiest cars in person ever. Like, if you think this is good looking, no, this is nothing compared to that. That's, that's a stunning car to look at. But to drive, I think this is, is better. And also the interior quality, but more on that in my full review, but yeah. But surprisingly enough, I think there are actually, there's actually more tire noise also off these Michelin tires. I don't know, I may have said something else in another video and I may be contradicting myself, but that's why, you know, I drove these uh, back to back. This feels more refined. It's, it's, you know, it's not as soft in the suspension, but it feels like, you know, it irons out the bumps more. I don't know, it just feels more Germanic. That's the best way to put it. it this feels closer to a Porsche than that does to an Audi, if that makes sense. Okay, guys, you know it's been a long day and I filmed a lot of videos when we filmed the whole outro and I forget to turn on my microphone. That's on, the camera's on, that's a huge fail. So I'm just gonna recap quickly. We arrived here with the Polestar with 33% state of charge and the EX90 29% state of charge. We connected to the chargers and with this immediately we got like 192 kilowatts and then it throttled and then we connected this one and we only got 115 kilowatts which is what we are getting now at 44% state of charge. We are right here with 29 and we've already done a range test of this and charged this earlier today and when we did that we got like 150, 145 kilowatts, so that was very curious. But the thing is, remember 115 kilowatts there? If you come over here, we're pretty much getting the same here. 115, 116, and again, we've connected to this earlier today with over 50% state of charge and gotten close to 150 kilowatts. So that's weird. And then if you look up here, you can see that this is purple. That means this is in use, that is in use. But take a look at these. These are also purple. They should be white like these over here. So that makes me think that there's actually limitations at this charging station. There's an issue and not the cars because both got 115 kilowatts at the same time. So that is very, very curious. So again, I don't think it's the cars. We've gotten, you know, 150 kilowatts from both of these two cars earlier today. And like the temperature is fine. It's 20 degrees Celsius outside now. It was 25 when we started. So the battery pack should be up in temperature even though we haven't preconditioned these cars. Okay, now let's take a look at the results. And we've already filmed this. So I'm gonna just gonna recap. Okay, so this EX90 had an average consumption on today's trip of 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. It doesn't have a decimal point in the trip computer. So we don't know if it's like 23.7 or 24.3. So we're just gonna guess it's 24.0. And when we do the calculations, that gives this car a theoretical range under today's conditions of 432 kilometers, which is actually very good and better by about 32 kilometers than the test we did earlier today. So why is that? Well, I think, you know, a little bit lower temperatures. I think the optimal is around 20, 22 degrees Celsius for getting the most range out of an electric car. Today, it was warmer. When we ran this, it was like maybe 25 degrees and sunny. So the AC was running a lot higher or a lot harder. And now, you know, it's, it's, the sun is setting. And also it's a lot more calm now. There was more winds earlier today. And that means, you know, we had a push in the Southwest direction, but also a headwind on our way back and that if you go watch that video you can see that the consumption actually you know went up like three kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers but i think that is actually really good real world range going 120 kilometers an hour or also maybe our average speed was like a kilometer or two slower uh because we were driving both cars and trying to keep up with each other that's also a factor right but it's going to be in the table down below our actual measured average speed now for the Polestar 3. This had an average consumption of 23.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers because this does actually have, you know, a decimal place behind uh, that whole number in the trip computer. And that is also an improvement over the test we did earlier today. And when we did the test earlier today, it was even hotter when we did the test of this, like 26 degrees Celsius and the sun blasting, it was like midday. 
So when we do the calculations, take the battery pack size, divide it by the consumption, subtract 3% for heat and discharging losses, the same as we did there, that means a theoretical range under today's conditions of 451 kilometers. And if I'm not mistaken, if that's not a new record, it's at least a new record for an all-wheel drive vehicle and for an SUV. And that is very impressive. This is still a big, large car. 21-inch wheels, 295 tires in the, the rear. I mean, that is not an efficiency setup for this car. You can get even better if you go for a 20-inch wheel setup with narrower tires with this Polestar 3. And if you go for the rear wheel drive version with that same battery pack, you're gonna get maybe 500 kilometers of real world range going 120 kilometers an hour. I think that is actually very impressive out of this car. But the big question is, and we're gonna answer this in my full review where I do a battle between these two cars, which is gonna come out later, because we're gonna go through the details, interior, exterior, infotainment system, differences, similarities, but take this and compromise the interior space to get this but take the compromise and get less real world range i think this is a prettier car but i also think this is a better car to drive with a nicer interior we're going to expand more on that in my full review but let me know in the comment section down below do you think the range gain is enough to justify what you lose in practicality because two row five seats three row seven seats and a very very big trunk and it was also such a beautiful thing to look at. Let me know in the comment section down below. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.